Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to all my beloved students. Okay, so for today, okay, we will uh, go into chapter 1, okay, which is introduction to financial market. Okay, so the learning outcomes from this chapter is we expect that the students should be able to explain the equity market and its development in Malaysia. And number two is describe the history and development of securities market in Malaysia. Okay, so along the way, okay, we will uh, discuss about the money market, capital market, securities market, participating organization, types of securities traded, and history and development. Okay, first of all, you need to know, okay, that the Malaysian market is approaching the status of a developed market on par, okay, which is, it is on par, okay, in order to uh, achieve, okay, or to be with the international standard. Okay, as measured with the capital markets of advanced economies. So, as we know that Malaysia is in the category of uh, developing developed countries. Okay, so it has been strongly supported by the effective management of our government. Okay, as well as the understanding of the whole systems of financial market and stock exchange by the investors. Okay, so uh, our Malaysian market, okay, it is uh, fully support by the fully support and fully monitored by the government and also the acts and also regulation. Okay, so you need to know the financial market overview. Okay, so financial market consists of capital market and also money market. Okay, and then in capital market, okay, we have primary market and also secondary market. Okay, so financial market, okay, this is what we call uh, the whole system of the financial uh, products being offered, being traded in the market. Okay, so we go into the capital market. Alright, so basically... Capital market is a place for long-term investment, while money market it is a it is a place for short-term investment being traded. All right. In capital market, we have primary market. Okay, primary market is a place for the new securities traded, new securities being introduced into the market. And then will be traded, will be introduced to the uh, new investors. While secondary market, this is for the issued securities, which is after the new securities has been introduced, has been floating okay, in the primary market. And later, for certain time, they will go into secondary market. Financial market participants. So now we must know who are the players. Who are the players in the financial market? First is central banks. In Malaysia, the central bank is Bank Negara Malaysia. All right. So Bank Negara Malaysia will monitor all the financial institutions in Malaysia, such as. Uh, banks, uh, commercial banks, we have insurance, we have cooperative, we have pension funds and so on. Okay, number two is banks. Banks, okay, purposely we have commercial banks, we have investment banks, okay, so these are the institutions, the organizations that receiving uh, the money deposits, and also all the activities relating to their financial purposes. Next, we have corporations. Corporations, also known as companies. Okay, 
that uh, doing their business and also they uh, involve in the money transaction okay next we have institutional traders institutional traders is the investors that focus purposely okay on the investing on investing in the institution or corporations okay next we have retail traders retail traders or also um, familiar with the uh, public investors okay so they will buy or sell uh, the stocks um, individually all right or maybe they do uh, the other uh, financial transaction okay uh, individually all right so we have we have next we have brokers okay brokers is uh, the institution or organization that manage the uh, buying and selling the stocks uh, the financial products uh, traded and so on okay next we have market makers market makers or also known as the analysts we have for example we have economic analysts we have technical analysts that where they are a group of people a group a group of um uh, practitioners okay that will do the analysis and they will prepare the report and those report will be distributed to the others for example to the banks to the companies to the misers to the uh, investors and so on and lastly we have governments governments okay uh, for example in Malaysia so our government okay uh, uh, what we call is um, uh, important in our uh, economic um, economic development because uh, government will help uh, for example will help the small and medium companies in order to facilitate some of the uh, facilities or maybe uh, give inject some uh, funds to them in order to boost their business and also at the same time to boost our economy okay so these are the financial market participants or players okay now we go focus into money market and capital market all right so as i mentioned uh, previously all right so money market is a place for short term investment trading okay so some of the examples of short term investment trading some of the uh, examples of uh, short term investment products are uh, treasury bills we have uh, what we call bankers acceptance and also we have ncds and many more okay while capital market okay is a place for long-term investment okay so long-term investment here okay uh, refers to the uh, bonds we have also preferred stock we have also uh, shares okay so differences between money market and capital market is um, short-term investment in money market okay meaning to say that the investment is less one year all right so in capital market okay the transaction the investment period the investment maturity is more than one year so that are the major differences between money market and capital market okay so these are the money market instruments okay as i said as i mentioned before we have uh, treasury bills or we call it t bills and then we have uh, mgs malaysian government securities and also we have bankers acceptance okay and also we have an id or uh, ncd and we have repurchase agreements uh, and so on eh? okay 
Now we go to the securities market. Okay, so you need to know to differentiate, to give a brief definition, uh, exact brief definition about those market as uh, mentioned previously. So now we go to the securities market. All right, securities market is a place that allows suppliers and demanders of securities to make types of financial transaction, which include both the money market and the capital market. Okay, so under the securities market, we have stock market and also stock exchange. Okay, so what is stock market? Okay, stock market is a central marketplace for the raising of equity funds by corporations and governments. Okay, and then it made up into primary market and secondary market. Okay, so stock market is purposely for the stock shares transaction okay so what is the stock exchange all right stock exchange okay is an organization okay which provides the marketplace or facility for the buying and selling of stocks or shares okay so in malaysia our stock exchange is called bursa malaysia so each country okay has their own stock exchange okay so you need to know what is what are the names of their stock exchange in each country now we go to the bursa malaysia okay so in bursa malaysia we have primary market and secondary market all right so as as i mentioned you before primary primary market is a place for the newly securities traded okay um i give uh, you a scenario Okay, for example, okay, you, you own a company. Okay, so you want to raise some uh, funds, maybe uh, for the purpose of uh, expanding your business. For example, expand to the other countries or maybe you want to uh, set up a um, factory, right? So those planning, okay, those plan you need okay you need big amount of funds so where where did you want to get those funds okay uh, either you want to um, borrow from the banks it is impossible because banks will offer you higher interest rate so one way one way to raise funds okay is from primary market in which you apply for issuing stocks to the public investors all right so where where can you apply for the issue for the stock issuance okay you can apply from the bursa malaysia and also from the securities Commission and for after you follow all the guidelines, right? And then later your stock issuance, okay, uh, be approved and you can go into the primary market by offering the IPO. What is IPO? IPO is IPO is initial public offering, okay, for a certain time of period, okay. So the public investors okay will uh, get to know your company's background your profits your performance and so on okay from the stocks floating and later you for certain time for certain uh, months and later your stock will go into the secondary market all right so secondary market okay this is for the existing stocks existing stocks where you don't have to issue the IPO again, all right? But you just be there and the public investors or maybe the foreign investors will buy your stocks, okay? Okay, now we go to the participating organization, okay? Participating organization or PO, okay, is uh, also same as stockbroking company or SPC, 
Okay, so PO is a company which carries on the business of dealing in securities. This is under the rule of exchange. Alright, so PO must be a holder of the uh, dealer's license issued by the Securities Commission Industry Act 1983. Sita. Also known as Stop Broking Company or SBC. Okay, so under uh, PO, okay, we have two categories of PO. Number one is Universal Broker or UB and then non-UB. Okay, what is UB? Okay, UB, okay, it comes from the merge with or acquired, okay, from three or more other former SBCs. Okay, so number two, fulfill the necessary qualifying criteria from time to time stipulated by the Securities Commission or the exchange. And number three, be approved in writing by the SC to be a universal broker. So these are the criteria of UB. Well, how about uh, non-UB? So non-UB means that PO which are not UB. Okay, so UB, okay, once, once a company or a stockbroking company, okay, is um, considered as UB, okay, it is permitted to establish branch offices or electronic access facilities or EAF. Okay, what is EAF? What are the activities of EAF? Okay, first, positioning or stationing dealers' representatives or dual license features brokers' representatives. So, meaning to say that they must hire the dealers or premises. Okay, number two is placement and utilization of CDS terminals. What is CDS? CDS is Central Depository System. This is account this is an account that every investor must every investor must open the cds account in order to start your investment okay number three is number three and number four is about front office and also the back office so every universal broker okay must have these facilities in order to operate their Broking activities. Okay, so now we go to the investment banking. What is investment bank? Okay, so investment bank, um, as I, I mentioned you uh, in the financial market participant slide, okay, so number two, the second players, okay, is uh, banks. So I have mentioned you that banks. We have uh, types of banks. For example, we have commercial bank, we have Islamic bank, and also we have the investment banks. Okay. So basically, okay, the role of investment bank is the same as the other banks. Okay. But okay, uh, the main function. The main role of investment bank is for the uh, investment activities. Uh, I give you an uh, example. Okay. Uh, if commercial bank, okay, uh, we look at the commercial bank. Okay, so the commercial bank, the, the function of commercial bank is for uh, giving loan, offering the savings account. Uh, fixed deposit account and so on but investment bank did not offer this kind of activities okay so look what are the roles of investment bank okay so investment bank typically covers two key areas which are the raising and cap investing capital both equity and debt and also advising clients on strategy actions okay but also we have that we have the other roles of investment banks okay first one is merger and acquisition advisory means that 
when a uh, company companies some of the company maybe uh, they have to liquidate their business all right liquidate means that um uh, some steps to go bankruptcy lah all right so okay they have to get some advice how they are going to uh, save their business all right so they have to go to their investment bank Okay, and then assisting in the negotiation and structuring of a major acquisition. Uh, so, investment bank will assist okay, uh, the companies on these liquidation activities. And then underwriting. What is underwriting? Okay, underwriting okay, is a process of, okay, it's a process before your stock issuance. You recall back in the primary market, as I mentioned with you before, okay, uh, before you go, in, you, you want to raise funds from the public investors, you need to uh, issue your stock, okay, so before you issue your stock, you have to uh, issue the IPO, right, initial public offering, so before you uh, issue the IPO, you must underwrite, okay, underwrite means that it's like, Preparing documents, preparing documents of the, yeah, uh, we have to um, follow the guideline and so on, guideline from the uh, Securities Commission. So, you need, you need the underwriter. So, investment bank will be your in uh, underwriter. Okay, and last is raising capital through uh, selling stocks or bonds to investors. Okay, uh, for example, IPO. Okay. Okay, so these are the other uh, investment act uh, bank activities. Okay, we have management buyouts, IPO, cross-border transactions, valuations and fairness opinions, raising debt and equity capital, banks own investment, mergers and acquisitions, research and analysis. Yeah, of course, investment bank will come up with their research activities. And also corporate finance and last is corporate restructuring. Okay, so you may find out this um, uh, explanation, okay, from other sources. Okay, so now we want to know, okay, the flow, the process, okay, the process of uh, bonds and shares transaction. Okay, so look, look into the bonds and shares, okay. Uh, okay, so this is corporates or com companies, so they will um, uh, issue the bonds or shares okay, through institutions and later they will get the uh, contract, this is this not context, the contract, eh? okay, so uh, investment bank will be the third party that will monitor, that will handle, the transaction okay so these are the capital uh, goes to corporates this is the public investors that invest okay that will be the capital provider to the institutions okay so these are the inv um, investment banks in Malaysia okay Alright, so now we go to the stockbroking companies. Okay, so stockbroking companies play a critical role in the securities industry as the link between the client and the stock market. Okay, recall back the financial market participants. Okay, so we have brokers, right? So brokers here means that stockbroking companies or participating organization. Okay. Okay, so these are the role, regulations of stockbroking companies. Okay, so before certain uh, or before a broker uh, has been established, so they need to follow uh, the guidelines and also they are uh, gazetted under those, these are uh, security, uh, this act. Okay. So since 1990, it become mandatory for all stockbroking companies to have a minimum pair-up capital 
which was aimed to strengthen up the financial condition of the broking houses. Broking houses is uh, stock broking companies as to cope with the increasing volume of trading activity in the marketplace. So stock broking companies in Malaysia are governed by several laws and regulations. Uh, these are the laws and regulations. And also, okay, must follow the rules of the exchange, the rules of the Bursa Malaysia Securities Clearing Berhad, and also the rules of Bursa Malaysia Depository Berhad. Okay, so these are the roles, the functions of stockbroking companies. Number one is act as middleman, link that connect the investors to the marketplace. Okay, and also act as a conduct for funds inflow and outflow. Alright, number three, manage the flow of corporate information. Uh, this is, uh, for example, uh, as, as, as I said before, okay, all the uh, dealers and representatives, all the financial analysts, technical analysts will do, will prepare their report, their uh, forecasted uh, report. So, uh, stockbroking company will manage the information. Okay, number four, collect and disseminate information. And number five, connects the users of capital. Okay. Okay, so types of client handle. Okay, so these are the types of client handled by the stockbroking company. We have institutional clients, foreign clients, corporate clients, cooperative clients, and last is direct or margin individual clients. All right, huh, this one, we have types of securities traded in Malaysia market. Okay, basically, we have a huge number of uh, securities traded in Malaysia. But for this syllabus, we just focus for certain types of securities traded in Malaysia. Okay, we have share capital, we have fixed income securities and also others. Okay, we have ordinary shares, preference shares, debentures. Okay, we have notes, bonds. Uh, TSR, warrants, property trust, close end funds, and others. Okay. Okay, so share capital, okay, means that represents a portion of the owner's capital in a business. Okay, they share in the success or failure of the business. Okay, uh, for example, uh, twenty percent uh, shareholders, twenty percent uh, share percentage of share in the company so they share the success or failures okay this can be measured by the amount of dividends okay. so every investors every shareholders that invest in a company they will get written they will get the uh, reward okay so uh, dividends will be the reward okay Okay, so we have here ordinary shares and also preference shares. So ordinary shares means that uh, this is for the shareholders uh, in the company uh, in which they will get the reward okay, in the form of dividend. And they also uh, have the voting right, voting for the board of director or anything else. Okay. While preference stocks, preference shares, okay, they will get fixed dividend, okay, but they do not get the voting right, okay. Okay, under preference shares, we have uh, five types of preference shares. We have participating, cumulative, non-cumulative, redeemable, and convertible. So participating, this is for the uh, preference stockholders where they will uh, get a uh, fixed dividend and also certain portion of a uh, certain percentage of uh, what we call variable dividends okay cumulative okay this is for the uh, preference stocks that will um, accumulate your dividend if let's say that the company cannot afford to give to declare dividends to the preferred stockholders for that particular year. So later, for next year, okay, the company must pay. Must pay the dividend. Okay, non-cumulative, which is are not entitled to any errors in dividends. 
redeemable, okay, may be redeemed by the company at the stated redemption price on advance notice of a period of time. Okay, so lastly, convertible preference stocks, okay, this is for uh, preference stock holders where they want to convert, okay, they want to convert their stocks into common stocks. So it means that they may be want to um, get uh, voting rights okay and then they will uh, convert their preferred stock into common stocks and later they will get uh, dividends as uh, the other common stock holders but okay they also get uh, uh, not but uh, later okay sorry later they will also get some uh, portion of uh, voting right eh? Okay, so now we go to fixed income securities. Okay, example of fixed income securities is bond. Okay, in which, all right, uh, the bondholders, okay, will get, okay, will get the return in in the form of bond, which is also fixed for the period of time. Okay, so what are the differences between bondholders, common stockholders, and also preferred stockholders? All right, so. Uh, in the case of liquidation or bankruptcy, okay, so the company uh, need to pay all the debt and also uh, have to sell their stock, have, sorry, sorry, have to sell their assets and later they have to pay all the debt. Okay, the balance, okay, the balance is for number one, to the bondholders. Okay, number two, to the preferred stockholders and number three to the common stockholders means that okay the common stockholders is the last person that will get the dividend in the case of liquidation okay because the common stockholders uh, get the voting right right so uh, he or she uh, will become the last person to get the return or dividend. Okay, so you may read these uh, notes uh, for the benches, ordinary shares, notes and bonds Okay, in your manual book. And other securities traded in Malaysia, we have PSR, warrants or transferable subscription rights, call warrants, property warrants, and also closed-ended fund. And we have so many types of securities traded. Okay, so you may read uh, further from your manual. Okay, now lastly, we go into the history and development of Malaysian stock exchange. So, uh, the stock market in Malaysia, okay, start, uh, started in 1930 with the name of Singapore Stock Brokers Association. This is the first formal organization in the securities business in Malaysia. But later, seven years later, too long time ago, okay, re-registered as the Malayan Stock Brokers Association, but still no public trading of shares because of the lack of awareness and also maybe uh, in the protection issue, okay, or maybe Mm, the Malaysian people still um, not uh, good enough in managing their money, all right? And later, it's about 20, 23 years later, okay? Malayan Stock Exchange form and public trading of shares began on May 9, okay? In 1961, the board system was introduced with two trading rooms in Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. Okay, that were linked by the direct telephone lines into a single market. Okay, with the same stocks and shares at a single set of prices on both boards. Meaning to say that um, in 1961, Malaysia is still uh, far behind for, uh, in, the, in terms of the technology. Okay, so nowadays, everything has changed. Uh, we are... Um, at par okay, towards to the technological uh, revolution so everyone can buy stocks through handphone okay in 1964 stock exchange of Malaysia form 
Okay, this is due to the separation between Singapore and Malaysia. And also 1965, they uh, changed name into the State Exchange of Malaysia and Singapore. And then in 1973, all, again, they changed their name and uh, they come up with the, their own policy about the stock exchange. 1994, again, renamed as KLSE. KLSE is Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange. Okay, in, in 2004, okay, so KLSE renamed to Bursa Malaysia Berhad. Okay, so until now, okay, until now we still use Bursa Malaysia Berhad. It is followed by the demutualization exercise, which the purpose was enhance okay, the um, uh, competitive <coughs> position and to respond to global trends in the exchange sector. Okay, so um, the name of Bursa Malaysia come out comes from the demutualization act two thousand and three. Okay. To change the name also, you need to go to the parliament. <laughs> okay, So this is an act to provide for the conversion of KLSE from a company limited by guarantee to a public company limited. Okay, So uh, in 2005, okay, Bursa Malaysia was listed on the main board of Bursa Malaysia Securities Berhad. So everyone can buy this stock. Okay, We have come into the end of chapter 1. I hope everyone can uh, understand and do your uh, revision for your quiz one. Okay, so we go to the summary of content. It is important for students to study the real scenario of securities industry itself. Okay, particularly on the operations of Malaysian securities corporations. Okay, prior to that, students should explore all right, the fundamental aspects and concepts of the securities industry okay, in order to complement with the understanding of the theories and practical areas. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you.